I was told to speak about utilizing your time during the month of Ramadan, how to do it, perhaps the preparation, the run up to the month of Ramadan. And I think one of the most important things for us to note is why the fasting was prescribed in the first place. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Simple reason made mention of directly why did Allah tell us to fast. He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That's the reason. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was to those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. What is taqwa? When you hear people speak about it, they say the consciousness of Allah, the fear of Allah. What else do they say? They say various other things. I'm sure you've heard consciousness of Allah, taqwa. I'm sure you've heard the fear of Allah, taqwa. There was a question that someone raised a few years back, which resulted in a beautiful explanation that I want to share with you. They said, question from a young lad, why should I be scared of Allah? Meaning that when you say fear of Allah, fear Allah, you know, it's a good question. One of the primary things you and I need to understand is the consciousness of Allah, which means to know that He is your Lord, He made you, he, he is in control of everything on earth and you are going to helplessly go back to Him. Helplessly go back to Him, meaning the day you are in your last, no one and nothing will be able to delay you by a moment. If only you knew when the fixed time of Allah comes for you or for anything or anyone, it will not be delayed, not even by a moment. You got to go, you got to go. You could have had all the wealth on earth or all the health on earth, but your time is up, it's up. Something will happen to ensure that you're gone. So I need to be conscious of that all the time. All the time, I need to keep thinking about the fact that I came from somewhere, I am somewhere and I'm going somewhere. Consciousness. But the fear of Allah, do I worship Allah because I'm scared of him? Good question, right? When you're scared of someone, what type of a relationship would you have? So you need to put this fear of Allah into context. What is the context? There is a way of explaining it or there are perhaps more than one way. There is more than one way of explaining it perhaps. But here's one. So when you love someone and you love them dearly, think about someone you love. You love them so much. I'm sure you guys have someone in your minds, right? Oh, the way you're nodding your head, I hope it's halal, bro. You have someone in your mind, I love this person so much, right? Would you do anything to hurt them? Would you do anything to be in their bad books so the relationship is disturbed? Would you do something like that? The answer is no. Why don't you want to do something? Because I don't want to spoil this relation that I have. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I fear spoiling the relationship with the one I love. So this fear is born out of tremendous love. You understand the point? Because I love Allah so much, I fear getting into the bad books. You see what I'm saying? So taqwa is an taj'ala baynaka wa bayna adhab illahi wiqaya. If you look at the deep explanation that some have given, they have said, Taqwa comes from the term wiqaya, which refers to a barrier. So create a barrier between you and what? That which displeases Allah or the punishment of Allah. I make a barrier. How do I make that barrier? Well, by doing the right things and staying away from the wrong things. As simple as that. So that is taqwa in essence. So Allah says, I have prescribed fasting so that your relationship with me can be on the highest level. You, you realize who I am. You worship me correctly. You become compassionate and all the other benefits of fasting. And at the end of that prescribed time, you should have achieved a better relationship with Allah. 
That's why they say, وَيْلُلِّمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ You might have heard that one day, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Ameen, thrice, as he was climbing up the mimbar, the pulpit. And when he was asked later, he said, Jibreel made a few du'as and I was saying Ameen to them. What was one of the du'as? One of them was that woe be upon the one who witnesses the month of forgiveness and doesn't achieve the forgiveness. Something is for sale, literally for sale, and you don't make use of it yet you need it. Yesterday I gave the example and I'd like to give it again of Black Friday. Which month is Black Friday in? November, everyone knows, right? Why do you know? You know because you wait for it. You know because I can't really afford some of the stuff through the year, but I'm going to mark it, I'm going to watch it, and I'm waiting for Black Friday because there's going to be some awesome specials. And as soon as the sale is announced, we are on our phones, we are on the laptops, and we're busy buying, and we want to be as quick as possible before it's sold out, and we've got what we wanted, and the next best thing is everything's delivered at home, and we feel rich. But what did we do? We achieved during a sale, a sale. I wanted something, but I got it at a quarter of the price. I got it at a song, subhanAllah. Forgiveness is on sale in Ramadan. You need it, I need it. In the same way we sit and put on our phones all these reminders to remind us about a sale that is material. Surely it's more important to put the reminders to remind you about the sale of the forgiveness of Allah, the commencement of the month of Ramadan. Allah gives you beautiful, beautiful opportunities. As soon as the crescent is sighted, there is excitement. The ambience changes. Don't you agree? It feels amazing. There is a rohaniya. There is a beautiful spirituality that suddenly comes to life. It's the month of Ramadan, but we just saw the moon or it was just announced. Before you know it, you're already in Salat al-Taraweeh and everything's changed. What's that? That's a gift of Allah. The example of Black Friday is cheap. It's low. It's material. The example of Ramadan is the real example. But the question is, are you going to wait for Ramadan to seek forgiveness when you don't know if you're going to even witness Ramadan? Allahumma balighna Ramadana. Oh Allah, grant us the acceptance to witness the month of Ramadan. In the interim, start seeking forgiveness now. I started off by saying, may Allah forgive us all. Did you hear the supplication? Because forgiveness, I want it, you want it. I'm a human, you're all human beings. I'm not only prone to error, but I make mistakes and I'm a sinful slave of Allah. And so are all of us. Obviously the level of sin differs from person to person, but you're a human. I am consoled by what Adam alayhi salam did. Do you know what that means? At least it makes me feel human. Allah told him not to do one thing and that's exactly what he did. I'm not telling you to do something that Allah told you not to do. But the consolation is in the fact that Allah forgave him. As soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard him seek that forgiveness. Oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy upon us, we will be from among the losers we're going to lose. Oh Allah, we seek your mercy. Allah forgave him. What does that mean? That means part of the plan of Allah is to watch who is going to turn to him in repentance often. And so shaitan came up with another plan. What was his plan? His plan was, I'm going to make these people lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So you seek forgiveness, you're forgiven. And then shaitan comes to you and makes you think you're not forgiven. So you start believing that perhaps I am not forgiven. Allah's mercy will not encompass what I did. That itself is a bigger sin than the initial sin you committed because now you're doubting a name or quality of Allah. Do you see what I'm saying? 
You're a human. You made a mistake. Allah's given you opportunity upon opportunity to seek forgiveness. Did you seek the forgiveness? The answer is yes. I sought it once and twice and thrice. Well, don't let shaitan trap you again by making you think that you're not forgiven. Subhanallah. How dare you doubt the mercy of Allah? You don't need to wait for Ramadan in order to seek forgiveness. As soon as a sin is committed, you ask Allah, Oh Allah, I didn't do that out of defiance. I did that out of human weakness. I regret it. I won't do it again. Forgive me. Allah says you're forgiven. The first time you asked for forgiveness, your sin was already wiped out. You're taught to ask for forgiveness again and again, not because you're doubting the mercy of Allah, because that would grant you elevation in your status in the eyes of Allah. So don't doubt the mercy of Allah. Allah is Ghafoor, Rahim, Rahman. The fact that you are seeking forgiveness, there's no chance that Allah is going to punish you for a sin that you sought forgiveness from. Sincerely, whatever has happened in your past is exactly that. The past, P-A-S-T. That's what it is. Don't let it determine who you are today. You're a good person. You have goodness. Why do you think you're here listening to this? It's the house of Allah, not mine or yours. Would you ever attempt to visit a house of someone you didn't like? No way. Would you ever want to go to a house of a person you're not connected to and decide I'm going to go there? When you're close to someone, you feel comfortable to walk in. When you come to the house of Allah, it's Allah who's allowed you to come here to feel comfortable. So you walk through the door and say, Allahumma iftah li abwa Oh Allah, open for me the doors of your mercy. So Allah flings open the doors of mercy. You come in here, you fulfill your salah, you do some amazing, beautiful ibadah, worship for the sake of Allah. You listen to something that reminds you about Allah, that moves you, motivates you to become a better person. And if you want to become a better person, you need to value the iman you have. You need to value the Lord who created you. So that you can achieve consciousness of Allah. A lot of acts of worship were prescribed in order for us to develop a better relationship with Allah. Fasting being one of them. When I translate لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I say in order for you to develop the correct relationship with Allah. What is that relationship? It's a relationship of a worshipper and his Lord. A slave and the master. We are slaves of Allah. I put my head on the ground, but only and solely for the one who made me, no one else. I can never imagine putting my head on the ground in that position or posture for anyone or anything besides my maker. That's it. When I go down on my forehead, I say, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Sajada Wajhi, Lilladi Khalaqahu. My, my face has been put onto the ground in prostration for He. Who made it amazing look at that taqwa you should be thankful to Allah for giving you an opportunity to put your head in the highest level of submission which is closest to Allah sujood the prostration the closest that a slave is to his Lord is when he is in prostration brothers and sisters take your time in sujood Take your time in prostration. You're close to Allah, the closest you could ever be. Take your time in sujood. From now on, be conscious of the fact that when I am down there, I'm the closest to Allah. Don't just rush through your prostration. It's Allah. So when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, on one hand, Allah's forgiven you. Have you changed? It, the answer should be yes, I've changed. I don't want to do this. If human weakness makes you falter once again, do not despair. Repeat the drill. Subhanallah. Repeat it again to say, Oh Allah, I regret it. Do you really regret it? Yes, I do. But it's the second time I've done this, but I regret it again. And you know what? I don't want to do this. I will not do it. Oh Allah, I'm determined. Forgive me. You are my Lord. I have no option but to return to you. You are the greatest. You made me in the first place. I didn't even ask to be made. You made me. You put me. You gave me. You controlled everything about me. You decided my color, my race, my family, whatever else, my surroundings. You decided so many factors for me. Oh Allah, I'm your slave. I depend on you. 
you wholly, totally and solely have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. If Allah knows the ants that are under the rocks, do you think he doesn't know you? He knows you personally. He knows your problems, your name. He knows everything about you more than you know about yourself. If I were to ask you how many of your grandfathers can you mention? I think the most knowledgeable from amongst us will not go beyond eight. Anyone knows more than eight of their grandparents? Put up your hands. I see one, two. By the way, eight is not the past tense of eat. It's a number. Yes, so one person. What about the rest of us? They probably know nine or maybe ten. Beyond that, who knows? You don't even know where you come from. Subhanallah. And you think you know everything. La ilaha illallah. Do you know you and I came from the same person? Do you know that? Who was he? His name was Nuh. May peace be upon him. I heard some of you say Adam. Yeah, Adam is right. But Nuh alayhi salam and they came from Adam. So Adam and then Nuh and we're all the family of Nuh. If you didn't know that, you know it today. And I mentioned the other day that it wouldn't be wrong for you to say you're from the family of a prophet. You can say I'm from the family of a prophet. Who was the prophet? Nuh alayhi salam. وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمُ الْبَاقِينَ When Allah speaks about the destruction that happened at the time, He says, we made His family the ones who remained. So His progeny was the only one that actually continued thereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. But closer to that, a lot of us, 15 fathers up, we probably meet at one person. But you don't know, I don't know. Do you realize that? We're related, by the way. Smile, my brother. The next time you see me, say, that's my uncle. But my brothers, my sisters, it's factual. We are connected. We should be feeling that importance. The person sitting next to you right now, guess what? If you have a connection with Allah, you will realize that the same Allah I'm trying to impress made this guy here sitting next to me or this person sitting on the other side. The same Allah made that person. So if I want to impress Allah, I got to just be good to what Allah's made, right? Allah made these other people here. You don't like this guy, you don't like that guy, but why? Because Allah made them. Even if they are wrong, you got to try and correct them with a beautiful mannerism in a nice way, but you got to develop some form of contact with them. You go onto the street. Who are those people on the street? Are they not creatures of the same Allah that you're trying to impress? So you're saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, La ilaha illallah, while walking on the street, you're praising Allah, praising Allah. But someone that Allah made that walked past you, you spat in their direction. What was the point? What was the point? Did you achieve taqwa? Did you understand the relationship with Allah? You got to start fasting. Do you know why? When you fast and you're a little bit hungry, many, many things happen. Many, many things happen. You start thinking of food and then you realize I'm not allowed to eat. And then you start thinking of those who don't have food at all. And then you have a bit of compassion. And then you're taught in another verse, be charitable. The reward is increased in Ramadan. Be charitable. So you pick your, you put your hands in your pocket and you start taking out a pound or two pounds or a dollar or two, whatever it may be. Who do you give it to? Someone who doesn't have what you have. Allah tells you, you're a human. We made you. Allah has given some virtue over others in sustenance as well. Some of us are more knowledgeable than others. Some of us are wealthier than others. Why? It's a test. When Allah gives you more than you need, he, he wants you to share that excess with someone, others who don't have. That's what makes you conscious of Allah. We're on earth together. Imagine if five guys were stuck on an island and two guys found a, a tree with mangoes and they collected 50 mangoes and they started eating and the other three were looking at them. But there's only five of you on the island. Are you going to say, guys? You guys can die, we're going to be having these mangoes. It doesn't happen. Because there's only five of you and so many mangoes, it's only correct for you to say, let's share. Subhanallah.